All right, my awkward moment story has all the great elements of an awkward moment. It has a new romance, a little bit of lust, and roadkill, <laughs> those three things. Really, what, what is more like perfect for that awkward moment except in a new relationship? I remember when I was, uh, this comes up in my early 20s, mid 20s, I was living in Orange County, California, and um, Orange County, California in the mid 20s was probably the most superficial place and superficial decade to be in. And I was from Delaware County and I'd moved out there and I brought, I was in all the way. I was so shallow. <laughs> I mean, my shallowness knows no depths. I was so into my shallowness. Everybody was. It was all about what you had and what you didn't have. But I was trying to, um, I just bought a brand new car. I was really proud of myself. I was like 23 and I had an apartment and now I had a car and I was on my way. I had a Toyota Tercel with rubber floor mats and no air conditioning and roll down windows. But I was on top of my game and I remember I asked this girl at a volleyball league at the bar afterwards, she was, just beautiful. You really need to understand how beautiful she was for this awkward moment to work. <laughs> she was the most beautiful girl I'd ever, like, would ever could imagine dating. And it was Californian. She was the quintessential Californian with, like, 80s hair. If, if Claudia Schiffer, Maria, if Claudia <laughs> Schiffer and Cheryl Teagues had a baby, this was that girl. <laughs> and she had, you know, she was really out of my league. I was like reaching, really reaching. And she went out with me and we had a beautiful first date. I mean, it was a perfect first date, like margaritas, like at sunset on the pier in Huntington Beach. And we had a great second date. And she was 25 and she wasn't like an airhead. She was gorgeous and she had a perfect smile. And she was smart. She had her own condominium. She was like 25 and I was 23. And I was, I was just really out of my league here. You know? and I, I, but I was feeling good about it. I had a new car. And I was so excited. But the first date was perfect. And the second date was, it was more perfect. And we, it was like she cooked me dinner. And we went antiquing <laughs> as much as there are antiques in Orange County, California. <laughs> but, and then, you know, things were going great. And it was just, I, I couldn't believe that I was here. I was in Orange County and I had a car and my own apartment. And now I was dating this girl. And I was like, just before Facebook or anything, I couldn't like take her picture and show anyone. But I was really <laughs> excited about this. And then I was getting ready for the third date. And you know, the third date, I mean, things, stuff is supposed to happen on the third date. And I was, you know, <laughs> Everybody knows about the third date. And, and I go and I, I, I drive to her home and to her condo and I meet her and I open the door and she is just third date beautiful. Like more <laughs> beautiful than the second date. And she gets in my car and she had a really nice car, much nicer than my car. And she gets in my car and you know, we're rolling down the windows and we, we go to drive off and I don't even remember where I was going because there wasn't going to be a third date. You know, in those first two dates and in that new nest, there were red flags. You know, when you look back, there's always red flags. But the fact that she and her dog were vegetarian, it should have been a red flag that, you know, there's something amiss here. But I didn't care. She could have slept in swat stick of linens. I'd have been OK <laughs> with that. I would have talked myself into it. She was that beautiful. So we get in the car to drive off to the third date, and I'm so excited. And we're driving, not like a minute out of her, her, her house, and we make a left. And I'm driving, and on the yellow line between the roads, there's a bird, like a, a seagull, flapping. It's been injured. And she yells, stop! And the really pretty girl yells, stop! And I'm stopping the car, I pull over. And before I can ask what, she gets out of the car. And she's running back. And I'm like, I'm like, what the hell is going on with my third date? She's waiting. She's going to save this bird. 
And I'm stopped in the middle of, now I pulled over, and I don't know what to do. I'm looking in the mirror. She's waiting for traffic to clear to go get this bird. Well, I'm, I'm not familiar with the California roadside bird recovery procedures, <laughs> but I'm stopped. So I figure, oh, I'll back up. So I start backing up. I figure, are we going to take this bird on our third date? What are we going to do <laughs> with this bird that she's going to rescue? So I start backing up. And as I'm backing up now, cars have to go around me. So I keep backing up, and I figure I'm going to, like, I don't know what I'm going to do. But I'm backing up, and in the rearview mirror, like, the third car goes by, and now they have to go around me. So they have to cross the yellow line. And she's on the curb. <laughs> We're trying to rescue the bird. And I look in the mirror, and the sound of a bird being run over, <laughs> It's weirdly like crushing and a wind gust at the same time. It's like, and I look, and there's just a cloud of feathers. And this really pretty girl in a, is on the curb crying. I, I, don't know what to, I don't know what to do. She gets in the car, and now she has a little feather in her hair. She sits there with her hands crossed like this, still gorgeous. And there is the longest moment. And she's staring. And I know that she's staring at the rubber floor mats in my Toyota Tercel and the roll down windows. And in that moment, I know I am being measured. And she says, take me home. That was the end of my third date. And I still think about that girl. She was that pretty. I was that shallow. Thank you.